up, guys? We are at Lake Gunnersville, and I want to talk to you a little bit about really what happens when we go to these lakes that we really don't know and how we figure out how to catch fish. Because it, it's, it's almost just as hard for us as it is y'all. It really is at the beginning. What I think happens though, is that maybe after all these years, we start figuring out the process a lot quicker. And probably we have a different mindset too. Like probably a, a more open mind, if you will. Okay. So here it is. Here's Gunnersville. Now, even right now, I'm not allowed to be on the water. So this is about as close as I, I think I can possibly get. And if you look around, okay. So let's look around. There's the big bridge. But right through there, we've got grass. Then past the grass is some open stuff. And then a bar with grass on it. And then the river channel. And then another bar with grass. And then the other bank with grass on it. And even just sitting here, you've got pepper grass down here. You've got eel grass. You've got hydrilla out there. You've got gator grass. You got milfoil. You got coontail. You got all this stuff. You got it all. And you want to talk about overwhelming? I'm a, I'm a guy who fishes the grass. Like, I enjoy fishing the grass. Like, I get it. I live on a grass lake. This is it's too much. It's even too much grass for me. And when I first got out here, I have been to Gunnersville one other time in the fall, three or four years ago. And I never, I never came up this far. So we're, we're quite a bit ways up the lake. That's the Scottsboro Bridge. That's what I call it. I don't know what it's actually called. And when you get up here, I just put in, put in right over there. This is the house we're staying at. I put in right over there. And it was overwhelming to me. Maps really don't help. Nothing helps. Just your eyes. Just your eyes and looking at it all. Oh, pads. I mean, you got pads. You, it's even me just thinking about it is incredible how much it is. So what do you do, right? Normally, just put your head down and start fishing. And hopefully one bite leads to something and the next bite leads to something, so on and so on. Now we have four days to practice, okay? And today's our off day. So we got four days and even in the first hour or two, you're sitting here going, Okay, you don't even know if you're throwing the right bait. So you're not, it, it's really not even about bait. You're trying to figure out where a fish is in this just huge, huge, non-stop miles and miles and miles of grass. And like I said, it's not just grass from the bank. It's grass on bars, grass on banks. Should I be next to the river channel? Should I not be? Should I be on the first bar, the second bar? For the first two hours, that's all I'm thinking about. That's all I'm thinking about is all of that. And even if I get a bite, it's, it really doesn't matter much. So as I'm, as we're, I'm doing this, finally I, I get a bite and I see a fish and I get another bite and it leads me down sometimes a dark path. But what happens is, is I start putting bites together, right? And I keep on moving and changing and going a lot of different directions. And what I mean by that is, is like, I might fish that first grass, right, that you can see here, and then the ditch, and then the outside grass, and then the grass on, by the bar, you know, the grass by the channel. Am I fishing eel grass? Am I fishing coontail? Am I fishing hydrilla? I'll do all that. Then you got creeks you got to deal with. So then you got creeks, you got bays, you got pockets, you got main river bars. I know, guys, it's a lot. And so what I'll end up doing is I'll slowly, slowly start figuring out at first just how to get some bites. I'm not even worried about how big they are. I'm just, just bites in general. And usually, hopefully something happens. So what happened on this one is some fish started schooling. Okay. They started busting and I started seeing where those fish were. And I'm like, well, it doesn't really matter that they're schooling. And maybe they won't school during the tournament, but it shows me something. Showed me that there's a lot of fish in places that I'm probably going over and didn't realize it. So I got that going. 
And then after a while, I start realizing, you gotta realize there's 200 boats out here. And everyone starts to fish the same. Like, this is known for our bars, right? Fishing on the main river, current, and all this. The, I, the tournament supposedly, like, supposed to be one doing a certain thing, it doesn't, that doesn't mean it has to be. So what I ended up doing is over the next couple of days, I tried, tried like hard to make bars work. And I tried to make certain things work. And I tried to make ways that, that are a staple of Gunnersville. Sometimes that doesn't work for me. So what I end up doing is going, okay, let's, let's take a step back. Let's look at this, you know, let's look at maybe a boat dock, right? I don't know if they're on boat docks, but let me go see, right? So there's some boat docks. And I got to understand what boat docks are good because there's boat docks on the main river. There's boat docks in the pockets. So as I learn more about the boat docks, I learn more about the banks. And remember, first off, you visually see the grass, right? And you see bars and you see those things. But as you start to get bites, so the best thing I could say is start looking at your map. And what I'll do is I'll start looking at my map and I'll start looking at these waypoints. So then I start figuring out like, well, well, what does this waypoint have to do with the map? Like where on the map and what's going on on the map of why I'm getting these waypoints? That helps a lot, okay? So that's one thing. And then it's the kind of grass I'm fishing. And then it's the time of day. And then it's where, what I'm throwing in the grass. And as you start putting this all together, you start getting dialed in. You start getting dialed in on some things that you really didn't realize were a thing. It's impossible to know it was a thing at first. I think what some of us are good at and why we figure out some of these lakes is because we're able to take all the big things, right? And look at it as a giant hole and then take all the little small details, the very, very minute little details and start putting them together right almost like a puzzle piece and trying to figure this out and by day four some things started clicking and what would happen was is i would be i would be getting bites and i would be like man there should be fish here but i'm not getting bit here and so why is that and and i would keep on keep on and then all of a sudden i'd, I'd get a bite now a lot of times in tournaments if i was just fishing if I figured out how to get a bite that way, I would go run that water. That's kind of not the same thing I do though, and here's why. I'm not gonna keep on just going around showing fish that bait and catching them. So a lot of times, what works the best for me is, like say these boat docks. Say I got bit on this boat dock right here, okay? And as I get bit on this boat dock, I'm looking around like there's two or three more down there. There's a bunch that go down there. Well, a lot of people might go around and fish all them docks. Well, I might just get two bites on it, look down there and go, this makes sense to me. Let's go fish other docks that don't look like this. And that's how I do things is it's, I don't really necessarily, I'm just trying to get a bite or two. Usually two bites lets me know. Sometimes one is just good. And then I'll start going and fishing all these other docks and realizing all these other docks are horrible. They're not good. These are. So now I've eliminated everything else on the hopes that these docks are gonna be good. I do the same thing with grass. I do the same thing with the, the bars out there. I do the same thing with certain types of grass, certain types of baits. Now I haven't dialed it all in as in time of day, sun, wind, clouds, because we don't get all those conditions in a four day period. But we do all that. Some of us do, or at least that's what I do. I try to sit there, get a couple bites, run that pattern enough to where I feel confident, and then I instantly switch. I instantly start doing different things. Constantly, different banks, where the banks are, where the river channel is, where the creek channels are, all these things. That's what I look for. It's like a process of elimination. So when tournament day comes along, that's what we're gonna go do, right? Probably not gonna fish where that guy is. I think I saw that guy when we went to go eat breakfast. I think he was fishing over there. That's what we're going to go do. And, and hope, hopefully it turns out good in the tournament. I'm not sure. 
because, you know, it's still fishing, it's still Gunnersville. But I have an idea now. Um, I have a pretty good feeling of what's going to happen. Hopefully I can make some videos on this. I've taken all the footage from every day in practice. Hopefully I catch them good enough in the tournament to where I won't be mad and I'll actually make the video. But that's breaking down the lake. That's how I do it. I don't know if that's how everyone does it, but that's how I do it. And hopefully it's why a lot of times I figure out so much more during the tournament because a lot of times I'm trying to stay on top of the things and be present, right? Like not just rely on what happened in practice, always be willing to change. If I don't know everything about the area I'm fishing and the spot, because a lot of times it's spot related. And for me, this lake was spot related. For three days, it was a spot related deal. And on day four, it finally became an area where I have now an area. I have a pattern, but the pattern didn't work very, I didn't have a lot of spots to do it on. Now I got a little bit more of a pattern, a little bit broader of an area, way broader of an area to where now I think I can run some things, fish some spots, but fish some areas. I will do a lot better sometimes fishing a giant area, but I never really felt like I was around enough fish for it until the final day. And even then, we're talking two or three bites, but it led me down a, a path that made sense to me. And I'd seen enough of the bad that when I saw just a little bit of the good, I was going, okay, it, it, I've eliminated all the bad and got enough of the good. So that's, that's the plan. And maybe, the, maybe five pounders will just start schooling in front of me and I won't, I can throw everything away and just catch them that way. Now, what's the chance of that happening? This lake's a little low, but I do like it. It's a cool lake. It's gonna be fun. Toyota Championship starts tomorrow. Actually, it starts to, well, by the time this video comes out, it'll be starting today. So, uh, wish me luck, and I hope this helped. I hope this, I know it's not giving a lot, but it, it is giving enough. It's, it's, it's opening up that mind, thinking of different ways to break down a lake. That's how I break down a lake. That's how I break down a lake. I maybe have been to once, but it did not have the grass like this. It, it is not fishing the same. And, you know, I, I don't really know much about this place. But yeah, that's what I got. So, all right, guys. Hopefully, I'll get to make some videos on, on the championship. We'll see. All right, see y'all, guys.